Welcome back for part 15 of the Dungeons and Dragons Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden book series. This video will continue by covering the Arcane Brotherhood. Several members of the Arcane Brotherhood are key players in the Icewind Dale books. We need to know who they are and what role do they play in the storyline. First, let's take a step back and see who the Arcane Brotherhood is. The Brotherhood is a group of powerful wizards who operate out of a city south of Icewind Dale. The leadership consists of five well-known archmages who handpick the other members. Most candidates are never even considered, which makes people wonder what the Brotherhood is actually looking for. It's widely believed that the Brotherhood operates by the old adage, keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer. So the leaders seek out candidates who might later become competitors for magical secrets. This turns an enemy into a colleague. The wizards are free to pursue their own interests, but of course they are expected to put the Brotherhood first. Conflict between the members is officially forbidden, but if no one is left alive to report it, then it never happened. Now here's how the Brotherhood plays into Icewind Dale. The Brotherhood sent three members to investigate rumors of a lost city that fell from the sky 2,000 years ago. This is of course the city of Ethran. A fourth wizard found out about this expedition and set out to find it on her own. After arriving in Bryn Shander, the first three wizards all parted ways. Their egos are too big and each one thinks they should be the leader. Each wants to be the first to find the lost city and most importantly, its lost magic. The four wizards are, we have one Avarice, an albino tiefling evoker with a pair of gargoyle guards. Two, we have Dazan, human illusionist who was recently burned at the stake in the town of East Haven. He does, though, have a simulacrum who still lives. Third, we have Nas Lantamir, a human diviner who died on Ariel's island but still exists as a spell-casting ghost. Then fourth, we have Velin Harple, a human necromancer who likes to travel with kobolds, some of them living, some of them dead. So let's start with Avarice. Avarice is a cruel tiefling who enjoys killing things and will do whatever is needed to acquire magic items. She never backs down from a fight, no matter what the odds, and is paranoid of everyone, especially other wizards. She craves fame and hopes that finding the lost city of Ethran will give her what she wants. Earlier in life, she sold her soul to the archdevil Levistus in exchange for magical powers. She now, he now guides her through dreams. After arriving in ten towns, she was told to seek out a group known as the Black Sword. These are cultists of, Levist, of Levistus, and they are giving her sanctuary. Her gargoyle bodyguards, Gargle and Gurgle, are always near, so if you see one, you'll see the others. She uses Rary's telepathic bond to stay in contact with them. She will also be accompanied by a raven familiar named Skelm. The raven and gargoyles often act as aerial scouts for her. Avarice is, one, is the one who follows the players into the necropolis of Ethran. Unless she was killed earlier in the game, she'll be looking to steal the city's magical secrets before the players can. So if we take a look at her stat blocks right here, we can see her armor class not good except with mage armor 16 not bad, hit points 84, but you'll see she's pretty tough down here. 17 intelligence. Now look at this. Cold resistance and fire resistance. If you look at this book, well, cold resistance is probably the key one to have without a doubt. Other party members are probably going to be stocked up with fire spells. So that's probably going to up her hit points right there. You can see she has this icy doom whenever she dies. And same goes for the Black Sword group. They'll be frozen solid and can't be thawed. It's because of their devil connection, this happens right here. Look at her special equipment. She has a staff of frost. That could be handy to her. Look at her spell casting here. She has up to fifth level spells. She likes to use firebolt. And here's her staff of frost with cone of cold, fog cloud, ice storm, wall of ice, all handy. But look at this reaction she has down here. When Avarice is damaged by a creature that she can see within 60 feet, she can banish that creature to a frigid, extra-dimensional prison for one minute. <clears throat> While there, the creature is incapacitated and takes five cold damage at the start of its turn. At the end of each turn, 
the creature can make a DC-14 charisma saving throw, escaping the prison on success and reappearing in the space it left or in the nearest space that's not occupied. A creature that dies in the prison is trapped there indefinitely, so someone dying right here could be stuck there permanently and there'd be no chance of bringing them back. Next here, we have Design. Here you can see Design with his bodyguard, which is a white. Design was a red wizard of Thay, and if you know of their reputation, everyone hates them. Design the Illusionist wasn't in Icewind Dale for very long. Here's why. After arrival, he left the other wizards and hired adventurers to scout for him. One group found a tower in the snow, which turned out to be the lost spire of Nethereal. Design then went out of his way to eliminate anyone who knew of the tower. <clears throat> he was later recognized in East Haven, accused of murder, which he did, and he was burned at the stake for it. When the party, party first sees Design, he's already burning, so they won't get any information from him. What no one knew is that Design created a simulacrum, and it's in the spire waiting for Design to return. If the players find the simulacrum in the ruins of the spire, he'll tell them who and what he is. His hopes are that the players will assist him in using a room in the tower which can transform him into a real person. If this happens, the simulacrum will become Design in every way. If this happens, his stats change. Let's enlarge this just a little bit right here so we can take a look at those, right? Here it is. After finishing a long rest, he'll have the spell slots of a ninth level wizard. Added spells will be Fireball, Slow, Arcane Eye, Confusion, Animate Objects, and some others, and his hit points will increase to 49. His companion is a white, and the companion will be found with the simulacrum who he was ordered to guard. Red wizards find the undead to be more obedient than the living, thus that's why he has a white. So there we see his armor class, nothing to speak of. Hit points start off very low, not much, just intelligence on the stats. And of course the spell casting is very weak unless he uses that device found in the spire. But you see he likes to use Shocking Grasp, Acid Splash, and Magic Missile there. So there is another one. So looking on from here, we have next is Nas Lantamir. Nas Lantamir was one of the apprentices of one of the leaders of the Arcane Brotherhood. Nas was too slow to learn, so it suggested that she go off on her own. Before she left, she discovered that members of the Brotherhood were going in search of Ethran. She caught up to them and told them the Brotherhood sent her to help, which was a lie. Soon after this, <coughs> the group split up, and all the wizards went solo. One night while the others slept, Nas stole a professor orb from the wizard Velen, which we'll look at next. These orbs are sentient, intelligent, speak, read, and have extensive knowledge of four academic subjects. Two of Velen's kobolds witnessed the theft, so Nas killed them. Nas fled from town and went in search of a tome called the Codicil of White, a book composed by a real servant. The Arcane Brotherhood believes this book describes how to find the lost city of Ethran. Nas made it as far as Ariel's island, the island of Solstice, but perished there. She still exists, but only as a ghost, and her spirit won't find rest until she finds the tome. Her spell book and the orb she stole are still with her body. Nasa's white arctic weasel, her familiar, watches over the wizard's, wizard's corpse on the island and will be there if the party finds them. As a ghost, Nas can cast the spell she prepared before death, except for the ones requiring a material component. So if we take a look right here, don't forget that now we have a ghost. So there's the picture at the top and looking at the stats. Armor class, nothing. Hit points, 45. Does have a fly speed. <clears throat> Almost no strength, but a good intelligence like the others. But look at the list of damage, resistances, and immunities. Just about everything you could think of what you would expect with a ghost. Here you can see below, ethereal sight, incorporeal movement. How uh, nice could that be to have? Here's the spell casting, not much. Looking at the actions, withering touch. 
hit damage of around 17 on average. There's the etherealness, horrifying visage, uh, visage as you might think. Each non-dead creature within 60 feet of the ghost that can see it must succeed on a DC 14 wisdom saving throw or be frightened for one minute. If the save fails by five or more, the target will age 10 to 40 years. Doesn't mean much for an elf, but for a human, that's a lot of years. Frightened target can repeat the saving throw and so on. Don't forget the possession. Right here it can recharge on a roll of a six. One humanoid that the ghost can see within five feet must succeed on a DC 14 charisma saving throw. And as we know, charisma is often a dump stat. Or they'll be possessed by the ghost. And of course, you probably know the rest from there. So that leaves an interesting encounter for the group when they encounter Nos. Next here we have Veline Harple. Veline Harple is a skilled necromancer and suffers from a nervous system disorder that manifests as trembling. It affects her balance and stride, but she can cast her spells without failure. Even though she's an accomplished necromancer, her powerful family had to use their connections to get her into the Brotherhood, something she does not like to this day. Feline brought a family heirloom with her to Icewind, Icewind Dale, a magic item called a Professor Orb that she calls Professor Scant. This orb has knowledge of Netheril, and this could be very useful in the lost city of Aetherin. The orb was stolen by Nos, and Feline intends to get it back. After arriving in Icewind Dale, Feline hired six Icewind Kobolds to act as her guides and servants. Two of them, remember, were killed by Nos, when she stole the Professor Orb, but Valene animated their bodies, and now they exist as zombies. So how, how weird is that? She's walking around with even undead bodyguards here, too. If wounded, she casts Vampiric Touch to regain hit points at the Kobold's expense. Her familiar is a Snowy Owl, which is used as a scout. Valene is the only one of the Arcane Brotherhood who may be of assistance to the players. She may be with them after they leave the Durgar Fortress in Chapter 3. She may assist in fighting Zardarok's Shardle and Dragon in Chapter 4. She may assist in retrieving the Codicil of White from Ariel's Island in Chapter 5. She may go with the group through the Caves of Hunger in Chapter 6 and through Aethrin in Chapter 7. So she could be with the group for a very long time. And if we take a look at her stats right here, there we see the high intelligence. Not much of an armor class, but she does have the bracers. few hit points right there. Special equipment, there's the bracers, and she's got a wand of magic missiles. There's her spell casting, as you'd expect to see with a necromancer, using uh, things like chill touch. And she has the vampiric touch, very handy. Of course, she can raise dead and such here. There's a vampiric touch here, which of course will heal her as she's doing damage. There's the chill touch and the wand of magic missiles listed down here at the bottom. So don't forget these are key characters if the players venture to Icewind Dale. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.